Welcome. Let's look at using Newton's method to approximate the location of a relative maximum to three decimal places of the function f of x equals one third x cubed plus two x squared plus x plus six. And we have a graph of the function below. So if we want to approximate the location of a relative maximum, we're going to use the critical points of the function to identify uh, locations of relative maximums. So if I'm looking for a critical point of a function, then I'm looking for where either the derivative of the function is equal to zero or where the derivative of the function does not exist. Well, looking at our function and its graph, uh, the second option or second source of critical points does not apply. So we're looking at points where the derivative equals zero. Well, our derivative here will be x squared plus 4x plus 1 equals zero. So the solutions to that equation are our critical points. Now we want a relative maximum. So if we look at the graph, we can see that there are basically two critical points. The one on the left associated with a maximum, the one on the right associated with a minimum. But notice also that that critical point does not lie neatly on the lattice or on the grid so that it's not clear what that value is. So we're going to be approximating that um, x coordinate of that critical point again uh, to three decimal places. So um, and then when we're done, once we know it's a critical point, even though we have the graph, we'll show how we can confirm that that x value does in fact uh, belong to a um, relative maximum. And we'll use the second derivative test to do that. So let's go ahead and get started. So here's the function that we want to find the zeros of. Okay, and just so we don't confuse things, I'm going to relabel that function. We're going to call that g of x. And so we want to find out where g of x equals zero. And then we will need, and using Newton's method, we'll need the derivative of g of f, x and g of x, derivative of g of x is 2x plus 4. So let's go ahead and set up a table to um, iterate and collect all the information that we need for Newton's method. And we'll start with tracking the iteration. Then we will keep track of the x value that belongs with that iteration. We will evaluate the function, so that would be x in squared plus 4x in plus 1. Then we'll evaluate, and that's a g, that's the function g, and then g's derivative, that would be 2x in plus 4. And then we will arrive at our new estimate, our xn plus 1, which is xn minus g of xn over g prime of xn. So we weren't given um, an initial uh, value to start Newton's method. So if we look at our graph here, we can see that the critical point here where our maximum is lies close to this value. So let's go ahead and zoom in and we'll see 
that that value is negative 4. So let's go ahead and use negative 4 as our initial estimate. So um, using negative 4 as our starting value, we will have, uh, if I evaluate g at negative 4, we get negative 4 squared plus 4 times negative 4 plus 1, which is going to equal 1. And then we'll have 2 times negative 4 plus 4, which is going to equal negative 4. So our next x value is going to be negative 4 minus uh, g at negative 4, so that's 1 over g prime at negative 4, which is negative 4. So that turns out to be 4 plus 1 fourth, I'm sorry, negative 4 plus 1 fourth. So we get a negative 3.75. So our first approximation created by Newton's method is negative 3.75. And now we're going to evaluate the function g at negative 3.75 and the function g prime at negative 3.75. So g at negative 3.75 is giving us 0. 0, 0.062. We want three decimal place accuracy, so we will record four decimal places. So 0 0.0625 and g prime is going to be negative 3.5000. So then our next approximation is going to be found by using our formula here. So we will take negative 3.75 and subtract 0 0.0625 over negative 3.5. And when we do that, we get negative 3.73 so the second approximation we've created is negative 3.7321. Now, we want to evaluate our function g at negative 3.7321 and g prime at that value as well. So when I evaluate g at our new x value, I get 0 0.000 000, uh, to two decimal places, that would be a 2. I'm sorry, to four decimal places, that would be a 2. And then g prime would be negative 3.4642. Now we can go ahead and find our next iteration. Um, using this formula above. And when we do that, we get negative 3.7320. Now notice we were asked only to find accuracy up to three decimal places. And note that um, we now have an approximation that is the same. We have two iterations where the approximation is the same at three decimal places. So we can go ahead and say that our critical point, so the critical point of the original function f of x is x is approximately negative 3.732. Now from the graph we can tell that that is in fact a maximum, but let's go ahead and apply the second derivative test. Um, down here below we've got the first derivative of x, f, as x squared plus 4x plus 1. The second derivative of x 
would be 2x plus 4. And now if we evaluate f double prime of x at negative 3.732, that would be 2 times negative 3.732 plus 4. Now when we use the second derivative test, all we are concerned about is whether that value is positive or negative. And we can see here that we have 2 times um, 3, negative 3 and a little more. So this would be bigger than, or smaller than, actually, technically, smaller than negative 6. So negative 6 plus 4, that's definitely going to be a negative value. So we can say by the second derivative test that, yes, this uh, critical point is also uh, can be established to be a relative maximum. I hope you find this helpful.